Welcome to the Abundant Hack Show, where we are inspiring you to tap into your power to manifest the happiness, success, and fulfillment that you desire. I am your host, Niaje, the Upper Limit Coach. I am here to dismantle your limiting beliefs and remove the blocks so you can confidently live your life's purpose, because life is meant to be abundant. What's up, guys? It's Niaje. Thank you for watching or listening to the Abundance Hack Podcast. I am so excited about today. I have my amazing coach, Donnie, here today, and he is just a ball of fire, so I'm really excited about this. (laughs) Before we get into telling people who you are and what you do, what does abundance mean to you? You know, for me, abundance is freedom, And, and here's what I mean is is when you're living the life in the right direction doing the right things and and living your life to your fullest that is a freedom it's a freedom to choose the life you want to live the times you want to work it's it's freedom to do whatever you want and i think that's the ultimate definition of abundance and it's also the ultimate definition of success because yes. when when everything's in an alignment man it's a beautiful beautiful thing and that's when you find abundance yeah you know, it, it's it's a really really cool spot to be in life. Yes, and and I feel like you have achieved that. So I, I love to allow people to introduce themselves. I know a lot of people introduce people for them, but I, I want you to tell people who are you and what are you about. So thanks for that. That's kind of fun. I don't get to do that very often. But so former United States Marine, I always lead with that because I'm gonna cuss. That's just who I am. So so if you're fragile earmuffs. Um, uh, and I gotta say, girl, I love the pink, by the way. I got the blue going because the baby blue, but I love the pink. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank um, you. You know, um, but I, uh, you know, spent 20 years in the sales game, was a, you know, finished up as an international award winning, you know, sales trainer where I trained thousands upon thousands of people in the sales game, helping them get out of their own way and, and really grow their, their businesses, their people, their teams, um, and had a lot of fun with that. But I, you know, I spent that entire ride making other people wealthy because I was always an employee. Mm-hmm. And uh, in 2017, I you know, realized that I was living other people's dreams, jumped out of my own you know, launch my own company. And I really thought that I was going to be, you know, sail off to the promised land and, and I was going to start my own company, be all sunshine and rainbows, and the world would just open up. And yeah, that didn't happen. Um, and it was uh, around January when I started looking at my wife going, holy hell, this isn't working. I have no idea how to be a business owner. Mm. And uh, it was getting scary. I was, I was you know, quickly peeling through our life savings, um, you know, and trying to support ourselves. And it just wasn't working because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Mm -hmm. And about April of 2018, you know, I was finally looking at my wife going, babe, we're going to lose it all. I'm going to lose the farm. I'm going to lose the cars. I built a second house on our, on our dream farm. You know, we, we bought our dream house. We had everything. And we were fixing to lose it all because I'd taken the biggest gamble in my life to try and, you know, live out this journey and this dream. And, you know, in April, I'm looking at her going, babe, we're going to lose it all. And she said the most caring, loving, amazing words I've ever heard in my life. She said, well, get off your ass and go sell something. Mm. And, you know, it was, (laughs) you know, really what I needed to hear at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I had a, a speech to give, and you know, at that speech, I had told myself, "Man, I'm going to leave it all on the stage. I'm going to give it everything I got, and you know, that's going to be my move. If if it works, I stay in the game. If it doesn't, I go get a sales job. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm not losing at all. One way or the other, I'm going to make this work. So I went, gave that speech on the stage, and I can tell you, I walked off that stage exhausted. I left it everything I had and just threw everything at it. Well, the interesting thing is uh, one of the guys in the audience came up to me afterwards and said, Donnie, I love your energy. I love your passion. I love your story. I love what you're about. Would you come tell your story on my podcast? And I said, what the fuck's a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> and he, you know, he explained it to me. It's kind of like talk radio. You know, you interview people, people listen to them all the time, kind of like an audio book type deal. So I said, sure, I'll give that a go. That'd be fun. So I jumped on his podcast. We had a blast. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, long story short, I picked up a client from being a guest on his show because we were talking a lot about my sales background and I was teaching a lot of sales stuff. And uh, I went, holy shit, I can be a guest on a podcast and pick up business. 
hold my beer and watch this shit. (laughs) The next 30 days, I was on 67 different podcasts. Wow. Yeah, I deployed every trick and tactic I could get my hands on to, if you had a show, I was going on it. Um, And was on some really, really cool episodes. But it was around episode 50 that I was a guest on, a different... 50th podcast that I was on and the guy sucked. I mean, it was really, really bad, horrible host. Um, he's still in the game, which is funny, um, but it was just a really, really bad experience. And I realized man, if this guy can do, you know, uh, have any sort of success podcasting, I'm in the game. And so I launched my podcast, Donnie success champions, and it just blew the hell up three months in. I was top 200 in business category on iTunes five months in, I hit top 200 overall. Now I'm in and out the top 200 all the time, you know, business and overall, just depending on the day. And, you know, uh, podcasting saved my business. Man. It taught me, you know, processes, procedures. It taught me at everything. And now as of, you know, yesterday, um, I just bought in and we just built out an entire podcasting studio where we're going to have people actually coming in to start and launch their shows and everything else. So that's the newest thing on the horizon. I do public speaking all over the world, um, a lot on podcasting, a lot on sales, um, and I'm still living the game. I'm just helping people get out of their own damn way and, and chase their dreams. And I kind of enjoy, I'm really one of the only country boys in the game you know, <laughs> <laughs> doing all this and having a fun time. So. So. Wow. So, such an amazing story. Such an amazing story. And so you say you're a country boy. So you you live on a farm and I, I've seen I, pictures of the goats. Yeah, isn't it cool? So, <laughs> so I, I feel like it's such a different like living on a farm and then podcasting because I think a lot of people have this idea that they can't do something, but like living on a farm and podcasting are so different, but you pull it off so well. Yeah. yeah, you know it's what's crazy is so my farm's far enough out that that I can't get internet access out there. So uh-huh. I love telling everybody we have a, a beautiful uh, Victorian style house on our property, and it's basically a three story t- you know house. Well, for us to get internet access, I'd have to put a forty foot tower on top of that house and then a satellite dish on top of it to get line of sight. So we wow. need to say we don't have internet access on the phone farm. You know, we will use our cell phones if we need anything. So we don't get Netflix and all that stuff out there. So I actually do my podcast and everything from my brother's farm, which is down the road about five minutes. And I'm actually in my parents' cabin that was built on his farm, you know, on his farm. And that's where I do all the podcasting at. And I've talked to some of the biggest names in the world, Neil Patel, Brad Burton, you know, uh, Eric Thomas's team. You know, Ed Milet's team, you know, I've, I've just talked to these huge monstrous names and I'm sitting in a freaking log cabin, you know, on the backside of a property that every once in a while you can hear roosters and shit going off in the background. <laughs> you know? That is hilarious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and, and it's been fun as I love telling people is, is I'm talking to people from all over the world. I'm coaching clients from all over the world. Um, I have very few clients in my hometown. And because of the internet, because of everything, I've gone almost 100% virtual with everything, unless I go speak or, you know, like yesterday, I went in and saw some friends in, you know, in town in Fort Worth. Um, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the epitome of my freedom mm. of being able to do all this out here and be away from it all. And, you know, Every morning I get up, I take care of the farm animals. You know, we got goats, ducks, chickens, everything else. <laughs> I, I do, you know, my meditation. I do my journaling. You know, oh, you I, do meditate. I do. That's I a do. little woo-woo. I thought you were non-woo. Well, I, I know. I, I tell her people, I'm not woo-woo. I'm just woo, right? I'm not all in. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just woo. You know, it's it's when, when they get into the really, really crazy shit, that's what I'm <laughs> I'm like, all right, holy hell, you just looked at a star and tried to tell me what my next 10 years is going to be. <laughs> That's a little over the top for me. But, but no, I mean, with anything, dude, you've got to, you know, stay present in the moment, mm-hmm. right? Because it's, it's all those thought 
thoughts that are going through people's head that that are kicking their ass, you know? And I think a lot of, you know, why I was screwing up so bad in business is I kept saying things like, I'm a bad business owner. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I, I can't figure this shit out. And I didn't even realize at that moment how much I was self-sabotaging myself because I was constantly becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, if I'm telling myself I'm a bad business owner, well, holy shit, you're a bad business owner. And it kept proving through and through. And it wasn't until I found myself in podcasting that, Everything that I'd done in my career up to that point went, holy shit, why haven't you been doing this from the beginning? Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, I was journaling all through the process, but I went back and I looked at a lot of those journal entries when, when my business was going so south and they were dark. And then I'd never journaled dark in my life. Um, you know, but it, it was a lot of times I liked going back and reading the journal entries because a lot of times they inspired me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. But I will go back and look at those journal entries and uh, they were they were really dark. It's like, why aren't you figuring this out? What the hell is wrong? You know, and it was just not my style. And so that's that's the un woo woo version for me is, you know, you've got to be working on yourself. I mean, because if you don't get the thoughts out of your head, they start becoming the story that you start living and acting out on a regular basis. Yes. Yeah. yeah negative self talk is so damaging to our success. It's it's insane. So I want to, I want to dig a little deeper in that, that time where you felt like you were about to lose it all. So if someone is in that space of like, I don't know where to go from here. I don't know what to do. Like they feel like everything is falling apart. How, how did you pull yourself out of that? Besides what your wife said to you, <laughs> right? <laughs> What, because like still we have people that tell us, okay, get up off your ass, but like mm -hmm. you still have to take action. So yep. what were some things that you did to just shift your situation? So the number one thing that I would tell anybody to do is stop. And here's what I mean. Stop everything. Mm -hmm. Because the biggest thing that's destroying, you know, entrepreneurs, business owners, salespeople, wherever you are in life, the biggest thing that's destroying you is you're trying to accomplish too many fucking things at once. Mm -hmm right? Stop doing everything and pick one. Mm -hmm. Pick one lane and get that done. Because what happens, or at least what happened to me was I was stacking failures on top of failures on top of failures because I wasn't accomplishing anything, mm -hmm. right? I was, you know, I was, you know, trying to write a book. I was trying to start a freaking career. I was trying to do coaching. I was trying to do this. I was trying to do networking. I was trying to do cold calls. I was, you know, it was just, it was too much and I was not being good at any one thing. So, so the second thing is, is go do the exact thing that scares the shit out of you. Mm. Right. Because for, for, for me, um, I didn't know anything about podcasting and though being a guest never intimidated me launching my own show did mm. because I didn't know where to start. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what the directions were. Um, I didn't know people had courses and taught things and, you know, like that. So I was all up to myself to figure everything out. And, you know, I went down the route originally where I, you know, I hired a coach, I got a studio and was spend uh, quite a bit of money trying to figure it all out. And that didn't work because I realized I hadn't learned anything. I was just trying to buy my way out of it. Mm. So I brought it all in, launched my own show so I could go get my teeth kicked in. Right. And figure all this shit out. So, but it was scary as hell because I was in sense betting my entire company on launching a podcast. Mm. And, and that was intimidating as hell because, um, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to make revenue off of it. I didn't know how to turn clients from it. You know, I, I, I didn't know all this. And so I had to learn it. And I'll be honest, I think I launched the podcast the same way I launched my business without a whole lot of thought and vision. So out the gate, it was all over the map. And I realized that I was just recreating this, this failure mess that I was fixing to go into. So I stopped for a moment, got all my thoughts together and said, okay, pick a lane. What's the point of the podcast? What are you doing there? Who are you talking to? Who's your avatar? And got it narrowed down and started going after it and got that one thing done. And then from there, it's, you know, so, so absolutely turn off everything, pick a lane, jump into your fear. And then the third one, get a fucking process. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing is, is you're trying to do too many things in your world and most of your shit is, is all jacked up because you don't have a process in your business. Mm -hmm. You need to have a system in place or I like to call it your machine. 
you know, and if, you know, and I know you're amazing at like click funnels and all that stuff and building that shit out for people. Right. And that's what I'm talking about is find a system that you can duplicate and do over and over and over again. But what most people are doing is they're spending time on whatever platform they're on. The ad pops up for the new greatest, you know, email thing or, or click funnels thing or, you know, coaching thing, or this is your great fastest way to a hundred thousand dollars. And, and so they're dabbling in all this shit mm -hmm. and they're not doing anything well. Once again, pick one, get good at that, right? Make that drive that one home. Don't launch all the other shit. Get that one thing right. Get that system right. And now once you have that system right, when you go after all the other things eventually, the email campaigns and all the other stuff you had on there, you've already got your system in place. Okay, here's how I start. Here's next step. Here's next step. Here's next step. And then put those processes in every part of your business. Mm -hmm. Because without that machine running, you will not have a business. Mm -hmm. because it's just too many freaking moving, moving parts. So that's a big thing. You know, pick a lane, chase a fear, get a system, rinse, wash, repeat, and do it over and over again. Yes. Yes. I love it. And so now you help people, you've done a, a lot of research because you helped me launch my podcast. So you, you have been able to, cause you, you actually have episodes every day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just, we just changed it up a little bit because we were looking at the stats. I was doing a daily. So I did 195 episodes daily. Oh my goodness. I can't even wrap my brain around that. <laughs> it's so much. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I always, for me, it's a, it's a fun pissing contest. And what I mean, <laughs> somebody will walk up to me and they're like, man, I've been doing this for five years and we have 112 episodes. I'm like, cool. I've done it for nine months and I got 195, you know? <laughs> um, um, so that's just a fun ego stroke for me, but, but uh, we just took it down to, we're doing two episodes a week now. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is uh, we found that people couldn't keep up with the machine. Mm -hmm. So we had so many processes and everything else. So um, we reduced it down. We took my solo episode because I was doing an episode every Friday that was just me going solo. Mm -hmm. And we took that out of the equation. So I'm doing strictly interviews on Success Champion. Mm -hmm. And then I'm launching a second show called Donnie Talks. Mm -hmm. um, which is basically taking the Friday concept of what everybody calls me ranting. Um, uh, and we're launching a, a, a secondary show at that. And I'm really excited about that one because everything I've learned up until this point, I get to deploy on a new podcast. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that we're really looking forward to getting that, that going off books coming out as well. Books called business success champion. So that's in the works. That's almost finished up. Um, have an amazing team help me put all that together. So there's a lot of moving parts, but it's all fitting our machine overall. But, you know, I do spend a lot of time now. I'm coaching people through, you know, how to launch their podcast. You know, um, like right before we jumped on this, I was just working with a HVAC association, helping them with their business development process as they get kicked up in launch for the summer season. Um, you know, I just, I'm also working on a huge event in Baltimore we're doing later this year. So I'm going to a women's empowering event where I'm the keynote with a couple of other people, um, helping them, you know, get booked on podcast, write their book and become, you know, real performers on stage and their speaking presence and everything else. So a lot of cool things that are coming up and, and going on, but it all comes down to one consistent theme for me. And that's, that's, you know, light the fuck up, blow some shit up, get out of your own damn way and <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So one of the things that I loved about you and why, you know, our first meeting, I was like, yes, this is who I need to have coach me right now is because you're very unfiltered and you're just who you are. <laughs> and I think that that's so important these days because there's so many facades and there's so many people that are just like surface and kind of like this is my life for social media but like behind closed doors they're a completely different person but you are just real real raw unfiltered and I mean how has it ever been challenging for you oh, to just yeah. be yourself on social media like you, you you speak your mind you curse whatever you need to do on social media or on your podcast is that ever challenging yeah so this wasn't natural for me so mm -hmm. you know growing up you know in my sales career um, now put this all in perspective i grew up on a farm you know out in the country and then i moved to the suburbs in texas and and you know 
I realized that being a country boy living in suburbia outside of a big city, you know, wasn't doing me any favors. Mm -hmm. So I started burying the country style of life at that point. Then I went to the Marine Corps and I went and I landed a job in, in, in corporate America and I had a vice president of the company pull me aside and he told me two things that I took to heart. And the first thing he said is one, I've got to lose the country twang, you know, saying y'all and, you know, being anything country in corporate America will not work. Mm. And he wasn't wrong. It wasn't right, but I didn't realize that till later years. He wasn't wrong, but when you come across with an accent, a country accent, and whatever else, you don't get as much respect in corporate America because they think you're a dumbass because you say y'all and you have a twang to you, right? Mm -hmm. So the second thing he told me, he goes, don't ever tell anybody you're a veteran. And what he was saying by that is a veteran status does nothing for you in corporate America. He wasn't saying, you know, bash your veteran status or anything like that. He was just saying it does nothing for you in it. So I buried those two things. I buried that I was a veteran. I buried that I was country. Mm -hmm. And I went climbing the corporate ladder and I had some amazing success. I mean, I did some really, really cool things over my years, but nobody knew I was country. Nobody knew that I was, you know, a Marine. And that's just the life I was living because it was working. And then as I got into the sales career, the successful guys looked a certain way, they talked a certain way, they act a certain way. So I took on that persona of this over the top ego guy that, you know, was get things done at all cost. And you know, I really got to the point where I fucking hated myself, right? I just, I wasn't the guy that, you know, I grew up at. I was, I was all these masks. I was all these different people mm -hmm. trying to be somebody that was, was something more. And it was interesting. I remember the first time I told somebody I was a Marine um, in corporate America. I happened to be in a, a networking event and two guys were there and they both introduced themselves as Marines. And I don't know where it came from because I always hid that shit. I just happened to walk up and say I was a Marine. And I, I remember for two seconds, my whole body almost froze like, holy shit, you just said that out loud. And it was the most bizarre thing. But all the all of a sudden, there was like 12 Marines in a room. Mm -hmm. And we all sat down bullshit. And it was a really, really cool conversation. And it was the first time that I've been exposed to really veterans in the workplace that were embracing that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when I was doing sales training, uh, I was in a very proper America where, you know, I said shit one time when we were doing a training. And this old codger walked up to me afterwards. And he goes, son, let me tell you. You just said a curse word in front of 150 CEOs. You just lost so much respect in that room. And then for two seconds in my head, I went, fuck, he's right. Then the other side of it, I went, fuck you. I didn't <laughs> say that to him, but that's what's going on in my head is, is that's my upbringing. That's who I am. I mean, around my household, uh, I'm probably the worst cursor in my entire family. I know I am. My nieces give me hell about it. But but. It's, it's just natural speaking how I talk and, and how I do. Now, I'm respectful. I mean, I've gone on podcasts that have said, hey, no cussing whatsoever. It's very difficult, but I've done it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've gone on stages where they said no cussing, and I'll, and I'll respect their time, um, you know, and, and all that. But the truth of the matter is, I know two uh, absolute things. I can look at somebody and say, hey, you need to work a little bit harder, do a little bit of this, get after it keep working. You got this. Let's go and have a good time. And that's going to send a message. But I can say, dude, pull your fucking head out of your ass. Let's fire this shit up. Let's fucking explode. Let's go for it. And it tells a different fucking message every time. Mm -hmm. And what I find is the more that I learn um, and how I uh, came out of the closet with really the country thing, I mean, letting people know that that's where I lived in my lifestyle was with my podcast. Um, you know, I would, and, you know, most of my, my Friday episodes were, I would just ad lib it. I didn't have a whole lot of thought process. I would just talk about what's ever on the mind. And for some reason I decided the day to walk through, you know, my journey, my upbringing and everything else. And that episode went bananas mm. and I went, holy shit. I was just telling my story and people were into it. Mm. So I'm like, fuck it. We're just going to go full in. And you know, I've, what I found is the further I dove into just being me. You know, being the guy that walks on a stage with 150 people in the room and start off and look at the room where it's been kind of melancholy and this, that, and the other. And I just walk out and say, where my badass is at and watch the whole fucking <laughs> room go nuts, right? That's me because it sets the precedence for, for this is where we're going, mm -hmm. right? This is that next move we're going to make. And because 
I think so many people are brought up in that, in that proper style of household where you don't cuss. You say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And I still respect, I say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Right. But you know, if I don't meet people where they're at, I don't connect. I mean, it's like trying to take opera music into the country, right? You're never going to get a Broadway opera into the country lifestyle, right? Or taking, you know, um, classical music into the ghetto and trying to, you know, get them to listen to the music, right? It's just not going to work. You've got to meet people where they're at and people talk by cussing. They talk by, you know, being real and authentic. And the more I let my hair down, the more they're able to let their hair down and really, really connect. It's a lot, a lot of fun. And then I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about what I said, you know, last week or the week before, because it's just my story, what I'm into. And, and people really seem to resonate. And that's how we make so many breakthroughs in coaching and, and when I'm on stages and stuff. Mm, yeah, I love it. Fun. Are you using crystals to accelerate your manifestation? Every month, Abundance Box is sending you new authentic crystals, therapeutic grade essential oils, and more goodies to help you cleanse energy, raise your vibrations, and tap into abundance, along with affirmations and a supportive community. For more information, go to AbundanceHack.com forward slash box. And remember, life is meant to be abundant. Do you believe in purpose? I believe in having a vision. Mm, um, okay. You know, I'm not one that people are predestined or anything like that, but I do believe that you got to have a solid vision of where you're going. Mm -hmm. So when you say purpose, what do you mean? Just so I make sure we're on the right track. So purpose, like, like, so you don't believe that we have a predestined, like this is what we're supposed to do. This is who we're supposed to be. This is your specific gift that you're meant to share with the world. No, I don't. I, I think that, that you can do almost anything you want to do mm -hmm. if the desire is big enough. You know, and it's funny is I used to tell people all the time, hey, you can be anything you want to be until a buddy of mine looked at me and goes, look, my brother is six foot seven, weighs 300 pounds. He's never going to be a fucking jockey. And I'm like, okay, all right, I get it. The point of it is, if it's, if, is, is, is if you have a vision of where you want to go in life, you can create that vision. The trade-off is, is the vision big enough to pull you through the shit, hmm. right? And, you know, unfortunately in today's world, most people are in careers, jobs, lifestyles that they fucking hate, mm -hmm. right? They hate where they live. They hate where they drive. They hate, you know, everything about it. And the flip side of it is what most people do is they go and try and get the stuff to create the life. To, so if I get X, I'll feel better about myself. If I do Y, I'll feel better about myself versus realizing the answers in between their ears mm. for one and being okay with who you are and then stepping into that. The second thing is, is people don't want to bet on themselves. Mm. You know, I, I can tell you that without a shadow of a doubt, even though I had so much tremendous sold millions of dollars over the years, um, I never fully bet on myself until I launched my own company. And, you know, because I'd never before allowed myself to get stacked up against it mm -hmm. to where I had to start betting on me. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not telling people to go launch their own business to figure themselves out, but I'm, I'm telling you, them that if they don't have a vision that's so big that freaks them the fuck out, that gets them stacked up to where it scares the shit out of them, then it's never going to work mm -hmm. because they're not going to back themselves up hard enough to hit some sort of rock bottom, to go for it. And I don't think you have to hit rock bottom to go for it. But I think for most people, because they've lived a status quo life, they've been okay being okay, that they have got to ultimately shock the freaking system before they start betting on yourself. That's why you hear so many people are like, I almost died and then I started living, mm -hmm. right? You know, and all that shit because they had to shock the system. Well, you can shock the system by go doing the big things that freak you the fuck out. You know, and, and it's amazing when you start stacking those fears and going at them, breakthroughs happen, breakthroughs happen, because it's, it's when you're not chasing and leaning into those fears that you are creating that safety bubble around you and keeping you from go for it. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so what are, what are some ways people can start betting on themselves? Like what, 
what would you say is like the biggest challenge that that you see preventing people from betting on themselves or taking that leap whatever it is it doesn't have to be starting your own business but just going after the life that that they really want I think there, there's a couple of things. One, I mean, uh, fear of success is probably the, the number one thing that kills people from actually going through it, followed quickly by fear of money. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, they, they, they don't understand money. And both of those two things, they're constantly feeding their mind things to encourage that thought process. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're telling them things like, well, if I became successful, that would be too much stress. I'm not sure I can handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, same token is if I became successful, that would bring too much money. People would be hounding me. I don't know what to do. Or mm-hmm. they had that thought process, money's evil, you know, all that shit that pops on um, and all that. But to start betting on yourself, I would really start looking at your day as a whole and go, okay, what is one thing that if I thought about doing right now, scares the shit out of me and go do that. And what I find is in a lot of time in my coaching, um, you know, a, a lot of people are like, I want to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go tell your story on stage everything hold nothing back and then i'm gauging the response and a lot of times that whole thought process is somebody getting vulnerable and telling their story on shit stage freaks them the fuck out because everybody has secrets everybody has demons everybody has things in their past that they don't want anybody to know about and they're protecting them just like i did with the country lifestyle you know growing up poor that kind of stuff i hid behind all that stuff mm-hmm. and i will tell you if if you want to start getting a breakthrough and see what you're made of go stand on stage and get naked, not physically naked. <laughs> right? I was like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. get, get naked with your story. Get naked with, with, with your, your vulnerability. And here's the thing is, is some people that are hearing this right now are going, no fucking way am I going to do that. Mm-hmm. That's how you know it's the exact thing you should do. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you got to remember is you will find power by sharing your story out to other people. And two, you're going to save somebody's life. I truly believe that whatever you've been through, whatever you've done, you know, you sharing your story, you're going to have one person come up to you eventually and say, thank God, Mm -hmm. I thought I was alone. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's where the power comes from. But, and I use that example often because that's a big one, right? That's a big fear for people, but that's what I'm talking about to find a breakthrough is you got to go find that thing that just scares the pure living fuck out of you. And lean into that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I didn't realize a lot of my journey, I was scared of success because I was afraid I was going to turn into my uncle or my grandfather. Mm-hmm. Both were these patriarchs in the family, but these guys were very direct, cold, blunt guys. Mm-hmm. And I was afraid that I would become that if I did that. So what I had to do is start finding successes in micro levels and constantly lean into that and go, huh this is working and I'm still not that guy. Mm-hmm. And then stepping into it and stepping into it and realizing that I can just be me and, and still going for it and continue on, you know, that incremental growth. So I would evolve and level up my game and keep moving forward, you know, but, but you've got to find the fears and a lot of times to find the fears, go find this little shit that scares that scares you and step into that. Mm-hmm. And as you keep stepping, you're going to find, you know, what it is, is the big fears and, once you get to the big fears and you step into those, that's when the major breakthroughs start coming. Mm. Major breakthroughs start coming. Yes, I love it. I love it. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So what would you say are some tips to living an abundant life? Um, I, 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 f- I feel like you've set up your life like so beautifully. You have your farm, you have your goats, you have your podcast, you have this awesome system down. You have an awesome team, which is is hard in itself to build a team that's efficient that that you get things done because you have so much going on now you have your facebook group that you are very active in very supportive so like you you have this machine operating like like that well-oiled machine going i love it thank you so um let's talk about the team and then i'm gonna come back and answer your question how to live abundant life is um here's the the cool thing i found with all the team members that are helping me out with making this whole thing successful is they're all champions Mm -hmm. and and here's what i mean is they're all people that embrace me they embrace my message they they embrace you know what i'm about and i'm a champion of people right i love supporting my people 
and, and helping them out. And I call them all success champions, right? And champions for short. And I think because I'm genuinely into people, people have constantly raised their hand and say, Hey, I want to come along this ride for you. Mm -hmm. So everybody on my team, they're a part of the groups They're you know, and they were a part of the groups and became a connection or a friend prior to coming being part of the team, you know, and we've built that way. And I've just found people inside of my groups that are, that are champions that have amazing talents that I'm not good at. Like Laura DeFranco, who's my, you know, my writer for the, dude, that girl is such an amazing badass <laughs> and it can take my words and turn them into magic on paper. Uh, you know, Lorraine Vaughn speaks, who's, managing all my speaking engagements and all the behind the scenes stuff absolutely amazing sarah hammond who's handling all my graphic design joe phelan who does all my editing all these people were friends they were all you know champions that came along for the ride that continue to help me out kevin snow who handles all the automation and stuff you know that we do all of these people have just you know they're into my message they're into my story so it's really cool they are doing amazing because they want to continue to watch me win um, and come along with the ride because we all ride up, rise up together. Mm -hmm. Um, and the more we surround ourselves with the right badasses, they're going to step in and go. It's, it's, it's been an amazing ride, but, um, to live an abundant lifestyle, the, 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 the absolute thing you have to do is create a regiment. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm hard on this is there's, there's no way I could run two businesses soon to be three, um, and manage a farm take care of my wife, you know, and do all the things I do without a regiment and a process. And I am not a process oriented guy. I really am not. I hate process, but I have to force myself to do it because it's the only way to work. So you've got to get a morning routine. I don't give a shit what your routine is. I mean, I know there's the perfect morning and all this other bullshit. You've got to get a fucking system regiment that works for you. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for me to run people through just what my morning routine is, is I get up, make coffee, go take care of all the farm animals, which is feeding baby goats, chickens, ducks, you know, it's, it's everything. <laughs> um, and then I come in, I journal, right? Mm -hmm. And I write in my, my journal every morning. I meditate. A lot of times I'm only meditating for five minutes, you know, in the morning. Right. And then, you know, it's the day starts. And then when I get to, you know, my parents farm to go ready to start what's our office out of when, when, when I get there, you know, I have a whole process. Now we're going to tackle social media. Let's get that up rock and roll and see what messages I haven't replied to. Let's get a post out. Let's get all this engagement out. And oh, by the way, it's just now about 630 in the morning when I do that. Mm. Right. So I'm up at five o'clock in the morning and we run and gun. Mm. You know, I can tell you that most successful people are early risers. And, and the reason being is because they're setting their day up for a win. Mm -hmm. Oh, one absolute thing that, that, I, that, you know, we implemented once I launched a business is I make my bed every morning. Mm -hmm. um, this wasn't my thought process. Yeah. I heard the, you know, the Colonel's, you know, speech and, but it's cool every night, Elizabeth and I walk, get home and we, you know, roll into a nice comfortable bed that we don't have to worry about fixing the sheets and everything else. And there's something just so simple. Mm -hmm. So we do that, but that morning routine sets you up for success. And like I said, I don't care what your routine is. If you want to journal or you don't know how, come get my book. This, my book is so funny. It's called, that's not how you journal jackass, <laughs> right? It's a free <laughs> ebook on my website. Come get it. You know, and it'll teach you how to, how to journal. Very, very simple, but I don't care. I mean, if you want to journal journal, if you want to do meditation, meditate, right? If you want to go for a walk, go for a walk. I don't care. Just get a process that you can repeat every morning, no matter what. Yeah. Um, and then your whole day. Um, the, the one of the thing that sets me up for, for the abundance lifestyle is my to-do list mm -hmm. is when I'm ready to sit down and do the work is write down the things that I need to knock out that day. And if I don't get them done, they go over the next day. But every day start with what do I need to get done today? And then work your ass off to get that rocked out. Mm -hmm. no. yeah. um, oh, one more. One more is you need to uh, absolutely have a business development process, something you can do every day. And the simplest one people can do is 10 reach outs a day. Mm. So, so go on LinkedIn, go on Facebook. I don't care. You need to send 10 direct messages on whatever platform you're into every morning to people with a genuine thought process, a genuine thing and have go like it's networking one-on-one. Mm 
Mm. Every morning, 10 reach outs, it'll change your business. Yeah. All right, now I'm done with that, but that's, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So where can people find you? Um, usually um, on the farm with a glass <laughs> of Captain Wayne. Um, <laughs> So a couple of places. Um, my website's donnybovine.com. You can find out a lot of stuff there. Um, uh, but come hang out in the groups, man. That's where I love. So on Facebook, you have Donnie Success Champions, same name of the podcast, daily content. We're always talking about it. I mean, that group's become family. It's been, yeah. it's a really, really, really a lot of fun there. And then if you want to launch a podcast, we have So You Want a Podcast, come hang out there. I'm teaching everything podcasting, you know, in there. And both these groups are free. You know, it's just a lot of content, but, but come hang out. Um, or if you want to, you can send me a text. This is a new thing. So hold on. I'll give you a number. If you send me a text to 817-318-6030, just send your email to that text. Um, you're going to get a, a free gift from us. It's either an ebook or it's a podcasting guide. You know, you'll get a free gift from us as well. Um, and, but that'll also keep you updated with the book launch, the new podcast launch, and everything else we got coming out. And then, you know, anywhere. I mean, send me an email at Donnie at DonnieBovine.com. I'll respond, you know. And your podcast. Out. Yep. So the, Don, go ahead. The, the first podcast is Donnie Success, Success Champions. Have you launched the second one yet? No, it's going to be launching in April. Okay. Um, and it'll be called Donnie Talks. Mm -hmm. So we're getting that all set up, the artwork and everything laid out for that. Um, you know, and the fun thing is we're going to do a, a Q and a section on there. So if there's something that people wish I would cover or questions you have, you know, I'll give you a shout out and make it part of the, the show saying, Hey, Niaje, just send in this question. Ask me about this. Boom, 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 boom. And I'll answer the questions part of the podcast, you know, um, just to, to, you know, I'm all about helping other people trying to grow their businesses and do, you know, right by them. So, so, you know, but come hang out, man. Um, I love people, love being around people. My wife says I've never met a, you know, I've never met a stranger in my life. So, <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's definitely good vibes in the groups. Definitely yeah. good vibes. Yeah. yeah. And then people have to look out for my episode on your podcast. You yes. interviewed me recently, so that'll be super awesome. Yeah. Definitely check him out. Always good vibes. I love just raw, authentic people. And I know the word authentic has mm -hmm. been misused so much recently, but you are someone that I just feel like you're just yourself and it's like, take it or leave it. This is who I am. <laughs> and there, there needs to be more people like that. There needs to be people who are just unapologetically them and they don't feel bad about that. So I love what you're doing. I support everything that you're doing. I'm so glad that we connected and you've helped me launch my podcast and, you know, just connected me with so many things. So I do believe in purpose. And I feel like when I fully committed to this podcast, the right people were put into my life, the right events, the right situations, like New Media Summit, for example, and all of the connections I made there. So everything has just been amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. I love you say that I'm a direct, you know, my moniker that everybody likes to joke about me is my style is called Jarhead Gentle. So it's like being part Marine, <laughs> not an ass about it, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. So you have to send me some pictures of the baby goat. So if you're listening on iTunes, definitely go check out the video. The video will be on Facebook Watch and YouTube. So I can post some pictures of the farm and the adorable baby goats. They're so cute. And yeah, until next time, guys, love and light. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundance Hack Show. I would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and questions and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our yummy episodes. Every time you leave a five-star rating or review, I do my happy dance. <laughs>